。这是我们的肥牛酸辣粉。Let's go. That is how you lose. In no, we got game. really close though. We got really close. Anyway, Ethan, what are you gonna order, Ethan? I kind of say is I'm gonna order the the same as what I ordered. Yeah, maybe the same. You're gonna get the same on me? Yeah. Yeah. I recommend get something different and then you guys can share. <laughs> I mean, like, she's the boss though. <laughs> Welcome to another Chinatown Cheap Beats. You didn't think we stopped, right? No, this is the series that keeps going, just like the Asian work ethic. This is number 18, and you want to see what's new? What dishes we haven't covered? What about Ipoh-style Malaysian? How about a chain from Fujian? Or how about a sushi spot that I've actually never eaten at, and it's in the heart of Chinatown? Hit that like button and let's go. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Chinatown Cheap Eats. New York's feeling like summer. It was feeling like winter last week. Let's head in to Sha Xian Snacks. This is a brand new Fujian's own spot in Chinatown. All right, you guys. This is a chain from Fujian. This is a Chinese brand from Fujian. 好，我要那个你说本牛板面。好，这两个也要。All right, you guys. We're at Sha Xian Snacks. This is actually a state-owned enterprise from Fujian. In the past, Sha Xian Snacks. If you opened up a location, you had to be a Sha Xian local. But since they've expanded, they're everywhere. They're in Tokyo. They're all around the world. You know they let other people do it, but the workers here are still from Fujian,、uh, but they're not necessarily from Shaoxian County. What you're looking at, guys, are some Sha County, which is a county district within Fujian style ban mian, ban mian. Obviously, we know it as peanut noodles. I never had it on this level before because I've never been to Fujian to be honest. So here we go, Shaoxian Shaoxi. This was about、uh, this was pretty cheap, less than five bucks. Compared to other Bamian spots, guys, the price was about the same. This was three fifty. Other spots are three dollars, three fifty. A little bit less peanut butter vibe, more salty with the preserved veggies, but more sesame and more complex actually. So, do you like it better? Yes or no? Do you like this peanut noodle better than the ones you can get at Shu Jiao? All right, for a snack, I like Shu Jiao, but for dinner, I like here. How about that? Next up, guys, for seven ninety nine, I've just got the Hei Ji Tang. This is the black silken chicken.、Uh, this is another thing that Sha County in Fujian is famous for. Look at that, guys! You guys are probably thinking that's dragon bits, some Gila monster. Wrong! It's just a black-skinned chicken, guys, and it's silky. Seven ninety-nine. This is a good deal. Other places charge you like eleven ninety-nine. <laughs> Forgive me, Shaoxian County of Fujian. I wasn't quite familiar with your work, but this Canto guy approves. I wouldn't say that this tastes too different from the Canto version. Definitely, like a little bit here or there, but、uh, it's really cool to see the chains come over directly from China. Like I said, this got to be the only chain in America from Fujian that's serving Fujianese food. This is our fatty beef noodle. Ooh, fatty noodle, meaning the fatty beef noodle, guys. And we got the clear uh, uh, potato noodle here right now, the vermicelli, but it's not made out of rice. Man, let me try this real quick because David had to flip the camera on me, and I'm very excited about the tajang mian, but I got to try the fatty beef. I think if you're into mala tang and things like that, you're really gonna like this one. Mmm, I like it. It's a little bit salty. Got the little bit of sourness、uh, from the preserved veggies, and you got peanuts. You got a little fatty beef right there, kind of like the hot pot slices. You got the chewy, potatoey noodles. Mmm. If you guys like that sour fish soup, the suiju, you soup, then you're really gonna like this one. All right, here I have. A dish that you can only find at Fujianese restaurants. These are the little one tons in peanut sauce, guys. The FJ one tons, as you know, it's like a pinch of meat, but a lot of skin. Almost feels silky, like a goldfish of sorts. And you got a little bit of preserved veggies there. Shout out to the South. I know the South really likes that. Mmm. Woo. A little salty, but I like. I like. Wow. I mean, I think it's really cool to have first gone to the New York Fujianese type restaurants, right? Like Shu Jiao,、uh, most famously known, 
And then across the street, you have a chain that's straight from Fujian. So this is more, I guess, current up to the times of what is authentic. Not to say that the FJ spots currently in New York are not authentic, but this is a popular chain from Fujian right now. So I'm really interested to try it and I like it, man. Honestly, you could just throw noodles on top of this and that's a whole nother dish. The FJ's got the combo down between the peanut sauce and their like version of soy sauce or whatever this was, their own mixture of sauces. Basically, they got a good combo. Mm, only $6.50 for this. All right, this is another special shashian soup. Also the silk and black skin chicken, but it got a little bit of different aromatics in there. I see a couple goji berries. Maybe this reminds me more of like the soup my dad would make, who's Cantonese. It's piping hot day, yo. Oh, Ooh, that's good. That tastes more like the Cantonese soup I'm used to having. Obviously guys, Southerners, whether they're Fujianese or Cantonese, they're from Chaozhou, wherever, they love their soups. And last but not least for 850, one of my favorite dishes of all time, the Zhajiang Mian. But this is the Sha Xian style. Now how different is it? I can tell you this, they use a little daikon and carrots. That kind of reminds me of a bun mi. That seems like a southern thing at least. Nuts, lots of little peanuts. And you have cucumbers, okay. That's pretty common for all Zhajiang Mian's ground pork. Let's do it. Let's see what's on the underbelly of this. Oh, flip it, flip it. Okay, kind of soupier. It's not as quite the dark paste that I would usually be used to, but let's try it out, guys. Sha Shan, straight from Fujian. Oh, and I'm eating Zha Jiang Mian. Oh, stop me, damn, I'm rapping in Fujian. Did you hear that? Mmm. A little bit more spice, I like it. Let's get some of these peanuts on here. Quite a bit of oil down at the bottom, but I'm not gonna lie, this is a tasty noodle. So guys, rounding off our first spot of Chinatown Cheap Eats, um, I would just say, you know, this is a new fast casual concept from Fujian, from China, that's made it now here on Grand Street, AKA, you know, Chinatown Extended. So the prices are good. And I think if you have not been exposed to FJ food or you don't know much about it, definitely come here and try it out. Sha Shan Foods. And sorry, before I go, you know me, I'm the mixologist, so I'm gonna take some of these wontons, put it on my bond man, take a little bit of this fatty beef onto the bond man as my canvas here, and you know, just mix it up, baby, because you know what? It's all Shawshank food at the end of the day. All right, I'm here with some customers. What's your name? My name is Katie. Katie, are you, and you're Fujianese? Yeah. Okay, and have you eaten here before? Yeah. Oh, what are you gonna order? Peanut butter noodles uh -huh. and dim dumplings. Is it pretty authentic from what you know? Yeah. Okay. Ethan, what are you gonna order, Ethan? I kind of say it is, I'm gonna order the... The same as what I ordered. Yeah, the same, maybe the same. <laughs> you're gonna get the same on me in? Yeah. Yeah. I recommend get something different and then you guys can share. <laughs> I mean like, She's the boss, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, next up on Chinatown Cheap Eats is Set in Saigon. This is the very first vegan Vietnamese restaurant I've seen in Chinatown. It might be the very first one I've ever seen in Manhattan. Let's check it out. As you can see right now, they are making the vegan bumbo kuei, guys. Listen, bumbo kuei is normally made with pig's feet, so you don't even think that there's a vegan version, but they figured out how to do it at Set in Saigon. Lotus root salad. Uh, we, we make it fresh from the lotus root. Um, it's a it mix with red peppers, um, you know, Miss Coriander. You put it okay. on top of the cracker. Right, but the, ve the vegan aspect is there's no shrimp paste, right? Right, this is vegan uh, rice cracker. Hey guys, listen, man, this is vegan food. Finally, for you guys, you guys couldn't eat shrimp paste and everything. This is a vegan lotus root salad from which, which city in Vietnam? So, this is from the. It's throughout Vietnam, yeah. I'm from Ho Chi Minh City, like Saigon. <laughs> It's good. So we have the crunchiness of the lotus root and then the, the fresh flavor from the dressing. And the herb. Yeah, and the herb. This is the Vietnamese coriander. Listen guys, try this vegan lotus root salad. It doesn't have a shrimp paste obviously because it's vegan, but I think for a lot of people in America, they might even prefer that. The Hue spicy noodle soup. Um, we make it with the vegetable broth we make in-house and this is the vegan ham that we make. It's called Chao. Oh. We make it in house, uh, eat with tofu, carrot. Uh, it's, it's very 
tasty with the flavor of lemongrass. Uh, what makes the food special is the satay. This is the satay. Okay, okay. Should we put it in? Yeah. The All right, satay. listen guys, this is my very first vegan bumbo hue I ever had in my entire life. And normally there's a big ass pig's foot in this. It's just, it's this. You said, what was this called? Chao. Chao. Yeah. Chao. Yeah. So in the meat version, they would make it with snail meat. Mm -hmm. uh, but we replace it with uh, kin oyster mushrooms. This is good. Thank you. Are you, are you guys a uh, Buddhist? Um, I love Buddhism, um, but I'm I'm not very religious. Yeah, but uh, I love Buddhism. But you guys are both vegans. Yeah, yeah and we both love Buddhism. Hey, listen, guys. I'm telling you, for vegan bumbo hui, considering bumbo hui normally is made out of like pig's foot, they did an excellent job recreating it here at Sen Saigon. Honestly, this is super impressive to get it this close to the regular version while only using vegan ingredients. Very, very impressive. Our third spot on Chinatown Cheap Eats is actually a brand new Dominican restaurant called El Sazon Road here on Baxter Street, right across from the courthouse, right across from the brand new jail that they're building. Let's check it out. How you doing, man? Please doing tell us, man. tell us about El Sazon Road. So yeah, so as I saw started, we um, pretty much group of us, family business. You know, me, Edwin, Mikey, Adi, Bijo, the cook. Pretty much wanted to bring the um, Dominican flavor to to Chinatown. Right, right, because there always has been Dominican restaurants in the Lower East Side, Alphabet City, but they kind of like pop up, go away, pop up, go yep. away, but you guys want to be yep. right here. So pretty much the biggest thing we want to bring is that flavor of Dominican Republic to, to Chinatown, but also we want to stay here for good. So that's why we got, you know, everybody coming in. You know, we had influencers coming in trying to help us with the business. You know, we had a video that went viral that went 1.5 million, you know. We're just trying everything we do to stay in this in this. And area. what do you guys have? You guys have really traditional items, but as well as some like new, more modern stuff. So, too, right? so pretty much we have the the lunch special, which is the everyday special. We have the roasted chicken, which we have the panini that sold out. We have the fresh bacala on Fridays. We have the ribs. We have the moro. We have the yellow rice that sold out. White rice and beans, red and black. We also also have our favorite smash burger, Dominican smash burger, with the fried Dominican cheese that went viral. A little bit of American fusion. Yep, we have a little bit of both. So we try to switch it up. We got the, the, the smash burger, which is American, with the Dominican fried cheese and the chimney sauce that makes it Dominican. So. Right, is the bacalao, is that fish? Yes, it's fish. Right, right. So pretty much we have bacalao fries, so people that don't eat meat, you know, we have the, the option for, for people that don't eat meat. Right, for people who are observing Good Friday, right? Exactly. All right, man, know. let's check out some food here at Elsa's Own Road. Yep. Yo, 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 you guys might ask me, uh, what'd you guys get? Uh, yeah, I got the, let me see what I got. I got the chicken stew with the Spanish rice, and I got a, a double smash burger. Word. Double Dominican smash burger. But what, like, for people who have never had that before, how do you describe it to, like, for Because, you know, like, uh, some people, they haven't had Spanish food, some people have. Word, 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 word. Uh, I mean, honestly, this is my first time at this spot, but, you know, with my experience, you know, eating Spanish food, you know, kind of getting into those Caribbean flavors, I would say the stew has a bit of salt to it, but there's, like, you know, some flavor that comes with the seasoning, you know, with the oils and whatnot, and then once you put Spanish rice with it you kind of get that 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 soak in with the flavor you know what i'm saying if you get a good rice you know what i'm saying it's fluffy it gives you texture you know you get a nice mix of everything you know so. and it, it's always a good deal too right yeah for sure for sure for sure especially 12 dollars for all that that big plate of food like you can't go wrong Hell yeah, you know what I'm saying? Enjoy. of course thank you man Appreciate aren't you guys for nine dollars we got the dominican smash burger this is not something you can find in dr this is not really something you can find anywhere else in new york city as you can see guys you got the pickles the salami this is very very dominican they eat that for breakfast then you've got the smash burgers super trendy right now you've got the pink sauce uh which i believe is a mixture of uh ketchup mayonnaise and something else dominican smash burger this went viral on tiktok I'd say it tastes about like 75 or 70 percent like a regular smash burger. However, you've got the salami in there, you've got the pickles, you've definitely got some additional Dominican elements, and I can see why people come here just for this. You guys are looking at the very first time I'm going to try this classic Dominican drink, Porisiano, and uh, I heard it tastes like a creamsicle in a cup, so. 
Yo, listen guys, the Puriciano with the Dominican smash burger is a combo. And of course, we got the Chinola, AKA passion fruit. Oh yeah, that's good. Next up here at El Sazon Road, we've got the El Sazon Loaded Fries. Like we said, guys, they're reimagining things in a lot of American ways. You've got salami, you've got the, the sausage, you've got the fried cheese, you know, chimney sauce on a bed of French fries and a Dominican flag. Listen, this is the one for me. Shout out to the Elsa Zone Loaded Fries, $12. Ooh, it's steaming. Hold on. Let me see some of that. I'm gonna I'm 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 come back. Matter of fact, boom. Mm -mm. Mm. There we go. You know what's crazy about it? It's like, it's similar to some of the ingredients in the Smash Burger, but it tasted completely different. Yeah, I can attest that for sure. Like the fry gives it a different foundation. You get what I'm saying? All right, Glenn, tell us about the mofongo here. This is with the pepper steak, right? So we have other options, but this is one of our better options. It's the pepper steak mofongo. It comes with fried plantain smash with a little bit of garlic inside and, and, some, and some butter. Mm. And then you got the pepper steak on top. We also have it in pork mofongo. We have it in chicken. We have it in shrimp. We have it in cheese. And we also have it plain for people that don't eat meat. So for people who have never had mofongo before, is it almost like a, a, a flavored mashed potatoes or yes, something? Yes, pretty much it's a, it's a plantain smashed up, but it has a kick to it. It's not like a regular, you know how we have mango, which is a traditional Dominican breakfast. It's different. It has, the, it has garlic in it and it's smashed up and it has the, the different meats inside of it. Mmm. Good? We're good. My man. All right, you guys, next up on Chinatown Cheap Eats, I've got a random stall here on Catherine Street. I'm about to buy two of these pears. I got it, but you know, you gotta, you know, you gotta gom carefully. Gom means pick. This one, this one is okay, you know, maybe this one. Three for two dollars. Oh, you sound good. You sound good. Okay. Okay. Yo, listen guys, I just got three pairs for $2. That's a Chinatown cheap eat. What's the name of this spot? That's her. Legal, legal pole, that'll give me, man. Uh, legal give a, uh, cell gong, cell gong gong si. Cell gong gong si. I don't even know how to name it. Tan tan, tan tan. Thank you. All right, you guys, our next spot is on Bayard. It's called Dai Wing Wa. It's a bakery. I'm going to be getting a zongzi. I mean, I think it's only right. It's the year of the dragon. Or you only go on. Three fifty. Zongzi. Listen, guys, they got a ton of carbs that are gonna keep you powered up if you're, you know, your tummy's aching at the lunchtime. But I had to go for the thing that's been around for five hundred to a thousand years, the Cantonese zong, aka zongzi. All right, so our next spot is actually called Falk Noodle. It's a brand new name that brand that actually took over the old e-noodle over on Catherine Street because e-noodle has moved but you still got some of the same Hi. Here, like, um, Hello. she's killing it come and see her uh, and so it's Falk noodle because the owner's last name is Falk so don't fuck around anyways uh, they got this Don Don noodle they recommended this is only 1050 uh, it kind of looks like a Jia Zhong Min or uh, my favorite uh, northern dish Jia Zhong Min but let's check it out guys wide noodles lots of minced beef Let's see how the Don Don Mian is. Mmm. 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 Definitely feels more like a Zhajong Mian instead of a Don Don Mian. Not as much as a sesame, but it's good. It's really good. Very mushroomy, very porky. Got a lot of crispy shallots. For 1050, this is a good amount of food. So originally, E Noodle is a Cantonese restaurant, but they did add some more like Taiwanese kind of mainland flavors. Like this Don Don Mean, 
definitely has some of the mala numbing buzz to it. So, oh, flying in. We got the Nero Man. Okay, so this is gonna be Taiwanese style, guys. I'm taking no breaks. I, it's It's got the red broth, so that means it's Taiwanese. Also, I think the beef chunks just remind, I mean, this is very common in Taiwanese beef noodle soup, but you know, it's probably like a Canto Taiwanese mix, you know. Not, it's just their own style. Is it one thing or the other? Maybe authenticity is overrated. Mm, okay, so the broth feels a little bit more, a little medicinal, very Cantonese, very Cantonese peeling. Let's try some of the beef in there. Or first of all, let me just get a little bit of their house chili oil. Hey guys, it ain't Sma La, but it's their house chili oil, which I still really like. Let's go. Mmm. Mm -hmm. So, to me, this soup is not super spicy, but it's very light, very easy to eat. I think uh, everyone's gonna like it. Personally, between the two, I like the Don Don noodles, but man, overall, guys, the sign hasn't changed, but the, the ownership has changed. So, we'll see what Fox Noodles does uh, moving forward, but it's a good start. And by the way, guys, to remind you that the wide ribbon noodle, that's definitely more of a Taiwanese style. So, that's what they're doing here at Fox Noodles, doing some different things kind of all mixing the Chinese diaspora together, and I think that is kind of a beautiful thing. Yo, chopsticks with the left though, I'm doing all right. All right, starting off Chinatown Cheap Eats 2024, I'm joined with none other than Marco's World NYC, you know, the what, LES native, Chinatown native, Italian guy, cover it. food all over? Uh, all over the joint, all over the world. Uh, but yeah, anyways, I do want to start off at this one spot over on Doyer Street. It's called Doyer's Old Town. And when it was opening, and I just saw the sign, I had no idea what it meant. And I was like asking people, I was like, what, what, what is this shop gonna be? But it's a Malaysian spot, and the owners are from Ipo, Malaysia. And they actually have some really cool dishes. If you can see here, guys, they got the first Malaysia hero. So they got hero sandwiches. Like possibly it's their version of a bun meat, but essentially they're $5 for a half sandwich. And it's Malaysian, and I'm super excited. And the whole, all, every, all, every, the staff is super nice. Hey. Okay, How's it going? so what, what, uh, what are your most popular heroes that we should get? I want to try some of these. Say, uh, rendang chicken. Uh, Definitely getting a rendang curry. chicken. I love beef rendang, but it's chicken. I'll just get it. And then what else? Either curry shrimp. Okay. Or uh, sardine fish curry. Uh, or the rendang tofu. Mark, have you ever seen heroes like this before? I yeah. never have. This is the first time ever, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty intrigued right now. I, I, I'm looking at the sardine fish curry here only because I never had that before. You want to get it? Yeah, Let's we're going to get try. that. We're going to get One that. One sardine fish curry, and then I want to try this uh, 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 a sambal chicken tortilla. You guys have tortillas over here. Guys, yeah. this is some new yeah. items I never... I don't know, did you guys just create these yourself? You can't get these in Malaysia. You can't get them anywhere else. Only at Doyer's Old Town in New York City because they just invented these themselves. Cool. Innovating at its finest right here, only in Chinatown, baby. They got tortillas, like where am I, right? right? So while we're waiting for our uh, Malaysian food, we're gonna check out this new anime claw store on Pell Street. What anime is this spot? What is this? Yo, what kind of anime are you into? I'll, I'll keep it real, man. I, I, I haven't watched And don't say the inappropriate anime. stuff. Uh, you know, oh, so what's up? Hi. Oh, I thought that was your mom for a yeah, second. I thought that what was the hell you doing over here? I was like, nah, I was like good. Do you gotta go home now? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it was fun while it lasted. I see fucking stuff. We're just gonna play some crazy music. This is like this is like the Gen Z new arcade of Chinatown right here. Because the other one's still going, I think. I'm not. Damn, I'm not. Yo, how do you feel? Is this, Marco, is this something that you would have gone to growing up? Probably not, but I just would have been curious and still came in and see what was up. <laughs> not gonna lie. I mean, automatically, you know, the serotonin levels automatically spike when you're in here. Yo, just the stimulus is crazy. If they were playing loud music, that'd be even crazier. That's true. Okay, all right, all right. I'm going, is this Jigglypuff? It is. She's puffing all right. You think I got it? Person. Oh my oh, god! Oh, I think you've had that. <laughs> I think you had that one. Uh oh, anime last anime try, claw. last anime try. Claw. Let's go, let's go. Hit the button twice. Twice, right? But, but don't it do first. it too early. I think back a little bit. Yeah, there. Huh? And I'll grab it, what, right now? Motherfucker. 
<laughs> All right, so we got our Malaysian heroes here at Old Town Doyer Street, guys. And uh, it's really interesting. I didn't know what to expect, but they're almost like little panini sandwiches and they come in all different flavors, only $5 each. So definitely a Chinatown cheapie. So right now, I, I, it doesn't look like much, but open it up. Yeah, we, I don't know what's inside here, but we got the sardines. Wait, we got... Oh, wow. Oh, wow, look at this. Oh, wow, that's the curry sardines, bro. We got the sardine curry fish hero. Ooh. Oh my gosh, here. What do I got here? Really good. We got the curry chicken, all right. These are all $5. This is a nice little snack. Here we got the uh, sambal chicken, and then this should be the... That one should be the tofu. Sambal, oh, tofu. Yeah. We got Branding tofu, tofu hero? Anyways, man, we got the saute skewers here, guys. Damn. Everything was five dollars. Nice little freaking afternoon delight right here. Let's try Let's it, guys. Try it out. Boom, cheers. cheers. Malaysia's first hero. Mm. Okay. First time eating sardines. I mean, I, yeah. I, I may look like a sardine, but these fucking these things taste really good. Really good. Not bad. Bread is soft. I like it. Five dollars. Great snack. Malaysia's first hero, Malaysia's second hero, because Malaysia's first hero is Ronnie Chang. <laughs> there it is. Say the sardine curry hero, very delicious. Not all heroes wear capes. I gotta say, I'm more surprised that it doesn't taste like fish. You don't get the, the taste of fish due to the curry. Little spicy, little sweet, a nice little treat, can't be beat. Guys, this is my shrimp one though. I'm really excited about the shrimp one. This one looks like it's got a lot of flavor. Mmm. Bro, no. how was that? You gotta get the spicy ones, all right? So, I'm gonna be real. This curry chicken one was a little bit light on the okay. flavor. The sambo shrimp. Sambo shrimp is where sambo. it's at, Andrew. Oh. Okay, okay. Shit. Oh my God. What we got over here? What I like, it's almost like you just got the roll along with your dish and you're just dipping it into the dish. So it pretty much tastes like that. Anyways, guys, I love to see restaurants in Chinatown try new things. Maybe this is something that they concocted since opening and being like, oh, we should offer a sandwich for people like Marco's World because yeah, I mean, wants to eat a sandwich. It looks like, it looks like an yeah. Italian hero, to right. be honest with you. I mean, listen, Mal it's Malaysian innovation in Chinatown on the rise right here. Malaysian <laughs> innovation. All right, guys. Malaysian, on. I'm like Eminem about to start a ride right now. Like, <laughs> I just saw rapping over here. Hey, saute sticks. Got to judge these too. Sausage's good. How are they? They're good? Sausage's good. Wait, a little Solid. chicken over here? Solid. Mm. Oh, man. Anyways, guys, come to Doris Old Town. $5. Get yourself a Malaysian hero snack. On to our next Chinatown GP. What you guys? Next up on Chinatown Cheap Eats, we have a brand new location of Gung Cha. Now, Gung Cha is a chain a franchise originally from Taiwan. Now it has officially been bought out by Koreans from Seoul. So you are looking at a Korean owned Taiwanese chain and they have some really interesting stuff. I got a dirty brown milk tea, but they got cookies and cream and some like very like Western flavors that may come from the Korean ownership, but uh, they, they didn't have that flavor today, so I'm getting something else. Go ahead, throw that brown sugar on. Woo! Guys, look at what Gong Cha is doing. They're torching your creme brulee. Yeah, I got Oreo crumbs on top Oh too. my God. You know why? Because they didn't have the Hershey's cookie and cream. I said, listen guys, I want a dessert drink. I'm feeling a dessert drink today. Give me the dessert. Listen guys, is it a Chinatown cheap eat? I just paid $7 for a medium boba, but I did get an Oreo topping. Listen guys, inflation, inflation, invest in appreciating assets. That's all I can tell you. Um, Let's check it out. Like we said, everything's moving towards milky, desserty, high caloric contents in the boba world. But this does look aesthetic. Like honestly, it kind of looked like the photo. So kudos to them. How do you drink it? You just drink it from the whole bottom? What do you do? Yo, pop the lid. Pop the lid. You know, for me, the reason why I don't mix it up is because it looks better when it's staying in the layers. But yeah, you know what? Just for the sake of it. Honestly, Goon Toss good. Listen guys, this should be dessert. Don't get dessert and then go get the milk and cookies and cream from Gong Cha. Just pick one. Listen guys, egg tarts have been synonymous with Chinatown for like decades now, but finally they're making that next leap to just like new types of Don Tots you've never seen before in your life. Let's check out Na Art all the way from Flushing. Listen guys, 
They got a creme brulee and red bean hong tao. They've got the salted boy with yolk song and seaweed, taro salted, classic durian, pineapple tart, ube cheese, and of course, original Portuguese po tart. For me, I had to get the one with the yolk song. Uh, what you got? I got the durian egg tart. I never had durian before. It smells a little funky. It smells a little funky, but. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and they, I feel like they candified it or something. They like did something to it, maybe custard-fied it. Yeah. This is actually a red bean creme brulee where they torched it on top. Oh my god! All right, man, let's check it out. Mm. Oh yeah, you can taste the Dorian. <laughs> oh, yo, with the red bean, I was a little skeptical. Sunday five long. This is a, that happy New Year. Yo, I'm, I'm gonna keep it real. I think I shouldn't have got the Dorian because I don't like Dorian. I don't. I, good, good, but, good. but the actual egg tart itself is very, very good. You got the caramel flavor, a little flakiness. It's good. Right, I'll try the Dorian. Oh, so that's good. Right? That's a real piece of frozen Dorian on top. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was game. That's just straight up no. out the freezer from that's Malaysia. Yeah. That's good, but it's definitely a quiet taste of Dorian. Man, come get the durian egg tarts. If you don't like durian, get the red bean, not nah our Chinatown, about $4 each. Listen guys, there's a gigantic plastic egg tart on the wall, and you are looking at condensed milk on Yuxong pork floss with seaweed. I'm telling you, $4.75, it's still a Chinatown cheapie. Look how much work went into this Don Tai. Listen, if you're watching this right now, you're asking me, does this work? I'm telling you, with a resounding yes, it does work. You got the sweet, salty, mochi, the tan from the egg, all working together. This is popping in Asia. If you are Asian, Asian, this is probably gonna be your favorite one. The pork floss on the dantar, it took some getting used to. It's pretty good. Do I like it more than the original ones? Maybe not, but it was worth trying. Not nah art. Not nah tart is taking Don Tots and egg tarts to the next level. Yo, we made it to Bo Key. This is a no frill spot that I've never been to before, but it's a first time for everything. And I've been living here my entire life. This is my backyard. And I've never been to this spot, Bo Key, so we're about to go check it out. All right, so we're here at Bo Key. And Marco, this is your first time here. And what we're looking at is a lot of dishes you probably have never had. Never. And you've, you've never had them because this is uh, this restaurant is unlike any other Chinese restaurant out there. What it took to make this recipe and have this food this way was a lot of traveling and a lot of migration and a lot of, you know, simply war. And, and honestly, so that's why there's not a lot of these restaurants anymore. So here we have the curry chicken with rice noodles, aka hall fun. So gale gai uh, hall fun right here. And this is like, this is what they will recommend you to get. And this was only like 12 bucks, 13 bucks. It's a steal. You got yumin, which is a uh, fish noodle. And this is a very much a chow to, uh traditional dish where you pretty much have noodles made out of fish cake. Wow. Like these are fish, fish cake cakes. noodles. Fish cake noodles? Fish cake wow. noodles. Wow. And then you have the country style duck, man. And this is one of my favorite things. You have your kind of uh, Vietnamese influenced nook mom dish, uh, dipping sauce. What's so that? You, you dip it in. Ooh, there we go. Man, let's just do the duck first. You know what, let's do the duck. All right. I'm gonna get a nice... Marco, had you ever been here before? I've never been here before. This is my first time coming here. Um, I always smell it outside. It had like always a pungent smell. So I was like, you know what? It, I don't know if I'm gonna try it, but let me tell you something. Don't judge a book by its cover. You never do that. Yeah, don't judge a restaurant by the smell on the outside. It does have a kind of a, a strong smell. A strong on the smell, and but the inside smells beautiful. So you're saying over all your years of living out here, it kind of deterred you from trying. And I tried the craziest shit in life, but I don't know why I never tried this spot. I'm still questioning yeah, myself. Yeah, you've eaten so many more disgusting things than <laughs> yeah. this duck. So, anyways, guys, let's try it. Country style duck. Mm. Mm. You gotta dip it. You gotta dip it too. Mm. So good. Wow. Juicy. Wow. That is a lean piece of duck. No, compare it. Can you compare it to the roast duck that you're used to eating from like Wafung and the, you know, Cantonese roast meat shops? I feel like those shops don't give you a ton of duck meat. They usually just give, like, a lot of the pieces I always get don't have the lean pieces like this right here. Mm. But, this on. is one of my favorite pieces. No, from a flavor profile though, 
is like not as greasy, and I think that sweet sauce just adds a crazy dynamic to the dog. Mm. Very delicious. I'm very upset. I've never been here before. Like, look at that. Come on. I don't think you'll find this in any Cantonese style duck place over mm. there. Curry chicken noodles with the uh, rice noodle. I mean, this is their one of their best dishes, and I would say it it, man, it can remind you everything from laksa to just uh, 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 Thai curry. So basically, there's a lot of different influences, right? Because I'm getting like Malaysian influences. Yeah, though. I mean, from I mean, the there broth, there I... could be Malaysian influences, but there's there's specifically Thai, Vietnamese, and Cambodian influences here, and but also like you know a lot of the people are ethnically Chinese, so it's it's crazy. Anyways, which makes Chinese. for a great, delicious, simple meal. Mmm. Mm. Creamy, spicy. Oh, that's curry. Amazing. Oh my god. That is one of the greatest curry broths I've ever. My palate has ever like got introduced to before. That that's. I mean, I'm actually baffled from words right now. That's really good. This whole time, man, you were discriminating against it because of the smell. You know what? I'm an I idiot. I can understand, I'm but... an idiot. I'll admit, uh, sometimes in life, you know, you're not always right. And honestly, I wasn't in this case. I'm happy I came here. So good. Last but not least, we got the yumin, a.k.a. the fish noodles. And you really eat it this way. So they give you a bowl of soup on the side. You can dip the noodles in the soup, right? Chiu Chow people really like to do that. Or you can just pour these pickled peppers, which I love. These Chiu Chow pickled peppers. I'm just going to pour it on some of these. Ba bang, ba bang, ba bang, a little drippy. Maybe not on the whole thing. And I get a little bit of chili oil because, you know, we love our chili oil. I don't have smala on me right now, but... I would, I would put small on that. All right. And then we got the soup. So this is how you wow. eat it, bro. So how you want to go in on it? Damn, I'm going to go in on, on the little sauce you got hey. going on there. Ooh, there we we almost grabbed the same one, dude. Hey. hey. Your first time trying fish noodles? First time find, trying fish noodles. First time. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I love a fish ball. It's like a fish ball noodle. It is a fish right. ball unraveled. Unraveled, yeah. And you toss it in in seasoning and pickles and chilies and the soup. And uh, it's really good, man. This, so, the pickle seasoning is everything. Yeah. You put that on there, forget about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I probably That's wouldn't good. kill a whole plate of this by myself. Yeah, a lot but of course. as a share plate, I would definitely get it as a share plate. So, guys, this is a unique dish. All these dishes we got here are unique to Boki or Boke. And... Uh, you really will not find these at other types of restaurants unless it's specifically a chill jiao diasporic restaurant. And those are not hard, those are not easy to come by nowadays. So shout out to Boki. We always gonna rep this spot, always keep it going. It's still a Chinatown cheap eats, one of our favorite. Boom, one of my uh Thank you for the Funk Girls for today. Thank you for you guys for introducing me to this spot. A no frills spot, a spot that I love that I'm definitely gonna come back to because you guys. Can you say the name off the with Bo Guy? Bo Bo wait, wait, All right, so Bo is the easy one. Bo Key. But Bo-Kay. Bo <laughs> we have Bo Key restaurant. Come on down and get your roast Hey, come on. Your fish, come on down. Come on down and get that country duck at yeah, right? Bo Key restaurant. We got Little the curry chicken and the fish noodles. Our next Chinatown cheap eat is a spot that maybe you didn't think about before, but it is on Bayard Street and they serve sushi. It is called Bayard Sushi. They've been here for years. You know what? Let's go in and talk to my man, Keith. Yo, Keith. Good. Guys, guys, if you guys don't know young Big Keith here, he's a hooper. We know him from basketball. Your parents own this spot. Can you quickly tell us a quick background on it? So, you know, my parents, um, they've been making sushi basically their whole life. My dad started when he was like 20s and he was able to open up his restaurant. We've been here for about five years now. We were actually at another location. That's All right, so kid. like, you know, well-priced, good sushi, good quality. So what you guys stand you know. you got, you're, you're also Fujinese? I am. All right, FJ serving sushi. You know what it is in Chinatown. Let's go. Let's try Bayard Sushi. All right, chef's combo, guys. This was $30 here at Bayard Sushi. Here, they have the low sodium soy sauce. I appreciate that. This spot is spotless. They got the wipes here, hand sanitizer if you need it. But no, nah, I mean, the place super clean. So I'm, I'm just excited to try it, man. Um, for $30, I would say this is a lot of sushi, a lot of sashimi. Obviously, it would cost a lot more at other spots. But first, let me go in for the sake, which is the salmon. Get the little wasabi hip in this. A little dab of soy sauce. Mm. All right, I'm gonna, guys, I'm gonna try the unagi piece. 
the roasted eel with a little bit of smala. Mmm, made it spicy. Guys, I think it's so cool that in Chinatown you can get all different types of Asian stuff. You're not just Chinese food, you can get Malaysian food, Vietnamese food, Japanese food. Yes, it might all be served by someone of the Chinese diaspora, but I think it's really cool that a lot of Fujinese, they learn how to do sushi. And even, they're also responsible for opening a lot of the more like, you know, affordable $80, $100 omakases around town that everybody loves. So, man, shout out to the, uh, yeah, man, just shout out to just people learning how to do sushi and giving you like a really good, affordable experience. Mm. Just to break it down for you guys real quick, this is salmon, this is tuna, this is white tuna, this is white fish, and this is yellowtail. <sighs> my favorite. I, I, I prefer to put the uh, wasabi in the soy sauce. That's my style. Testing you every single time to see if you do good work. Listen guys, we're continuing our crawl down Bayer. This street does not get enough credit. It's actually like kind of overlooked as like a through street. And remember guys, protect, respect, support your elders. So what are we doing here? Rolling it up, you know, getting it right. Is there a technique to rolling? Uh, no, you just gotta make sure you, you know, get the right angle on it so you get all the noodle. What you guys are looking at here is $5 instant noodle with curry fish balls right here, guys. This is called gale yudan. Um, this is gong zai mean. This that's what we call the instant noodle in uh, Mandarin. It'll be called fang bian mian. Five dollars. They cook it for you. Oh, he's drinking the soup. You drank the soup. But guys, five dollars Tony's rice rolls. It's a good snack. It's a cheap eat certified. Next up for $4, we've got a fresh ham and egg sandwich with some cheese in it. Let me just rip that open for you guys. It's on some soft bread, Asian bread, you know what I mean? Oh, they got butter on the top too. That's valid. Some spots would charge you $4 for this. Not fresh, sitting there from the morning. This is fresh, fresh. All right, guys, the last dish we got here is Tony's special rice roll, AKA a packed out churn fun souped up. I actually put uh, added crab meat into it, but it already comes with pork chicken and dry shrimp and a little bit of scallies. Yeah, my scallies. So I dress it up, put the little bit. I didn't put all the sauce on it, not all the peanut butter, not all the soy sauce, that's too much. $7 right here. Mm. Soft, gelatin, ooh. The dry shrimp is coming through, the hamai. Mmm. So one of the trends that I noticed is that everybody's just souping up churn fun. Like it used to just be your regular, uh, maybe dim sum churn fun, which is just shrimp and rice rolls, or sometimes off the cart, it's just that breakfast churn fun with the hoisin and the peanut sauce, very plain, but still good. But now people are just packing it out. I like it. I almost see churn fun, the future churn fun, to be almost like pizza, man. It's just a canvas. The rice roll is a canvas, it is the carb, it's the carrier, you can put anything in it and it all works. Hold up, let me, I might even have to put some smala on this too. Guys, our smala sauce, which you can get right now, well it's, it's out right now. Dude, this is gonna go wonderfully on this because I see the carb, I see the egg, do a little drizzle right there. That's gonna be spicy, wow. Mmm. Smoky, truffly. Mmm, well, wow. I don't think a single Cantonese person can deny that Cheng Fun is a comfort food, man. It is soft, warm, warms you up inside. This is a little Cheng Fun. Don't be like Cheng Fun. Don't be soft like Cheng Fun in life. But sometimes you want to eat Cheng Fun. Yo, what are you doing, bro? Wow, Pak Me. Ding guy, they Pak Me. 
All right, you guys, welcome to the relatively brand new location of Soft Swerve here in Chinatown. Um, typically, obviously, most people are gonna get their Soft Swerve ice cream, which tastes more like, almost like McDonald's consistency, but with Asian flavors. But today, I'm gonna be trying the hand scoop pre-mix flavors. All right, can I get uh, a scoop of the almond cookie, as well as the Vietnamese coffee, the Cafe Sudan. Thank you. You guys, this is almond cookie on top, topped with additional chopped almonds, along with vanilla cookie. I've got Cafe Suda, Vietnamese coffee at the bottom. Ooh, like we said, guys, I've had the uh, soft serve here many times, but sometimes you want to just go with some crazy flavors. All right, you guys, we're trying our second flavor here, Cafe Suda. Yo! I'll clean it up, I'll clean it up. Don't worry, guys. Was... So. Yo, sorry, Irish. <laughs> Honestly, it's pretty authentic here. The owners are Cantonese, they're Fujianese, second generation. Part of uh, the, the, the movement to keep Chinatown Chinese, or at least Asian. All right, next up on Chinatown Cheap Eats, we've got a spot. It's not necessarily the cheapest, but it is delicious. It is lauded, it's got accolades. We're talking about the Northern Vietnamese spot. Mom, or mom to us English speakers. Yo, what up, Gerald? Yeah. Hey, man, congratulations on everything. Tell us what you've been up to, because last time the YouTube has seen you, you were just serving the uh, the northern platters. Oh, on, yeah, on, yeah, on the, on the yeah. street. But then yeah. since then, a bunch has changed, right? <laughs> um, no, nah, man, well, we just expanded to this spot over here, um, increased our seating capacity. Uh, but Boondao is on the comeback. We run that dish springtime, summertime. Uh, for the winter, we were running a bunch of noodle dishes like pho bò, pho ga, uh, Tonight we're running uh, hút tiêu Oh, Jared. I ordered that. I ordered the gold. So, gold they might have forgot that you could speak Vietnamese <laughs> a little bit. No, just... I got you. I got you. When we sit down, I'll break it all down for you. All right, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you guys are always switching up the menu here at Mom. What are we looking at? Because some of the stuff I've never even seen. Before. Yeah, no. Today this is our actual first program. Uh, running goats. So I got in a whole goat yesterday with a bunch of goat heads, broke them all down, and we are looking at- Where, which, Where's the goat? Where's the goat? This is the goat meat right here. This is all the face meat. You have a goat brand right here. Goat this is a brand. goat brand. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, we can do it. Goat we can do it. Goat brand before? I, I have creamy. cow brand. I have it's cow creamy. brand. Should we just start um, with the brain? Yeah, just go for it. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. And then this, here's your dipping sauce for it, okay? Right. This sauce is for the eggplant, okay? Okay, this is for the eggplant. Yeah. And you got some herbs in here, some teto. Maybe put some of that in there. Okay. Go for it. I'm All right, scared. we're going. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're going. You got go it. Maybe cut it. Yeah, there you go. Get a little piece so you don't. Yeah, yeah. here. It's All creamy. Right. Here, have some with me. Have some with me. Yeah. So, not goat curry, but goat brain. All right. Guys, this is Yo, goat guys, brain. This is LeBron's brain. <laughs> that goat. It's like custard. You would not think that that was a bunch of brain synapses. It's not that bad. No. It's good. You just ate that goat's memories. You ate all their memories. What, what, what's the reaction been when people are like, Yo, when you tell this goat? This is our first uh, our first day running this service. Oh, okay. Uh, we're going to run this program for two weeks uh, before we bring back Um Yeah, this is actually a uh, Chinese Vietnamese dish okay. I got inspired from in uh, Saigon. Okay. Um, Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, let's just do the noodle soup. Yeah, so this is the just the noodles on the side with a goat broth, um, a bunch of medicinal spices. Spices. Oh yeah. Let's get let's get down on it. Get, show us. Show. Got you. I got you. Now I'm just, just dipping in here like this. Mmm. Listen, guys. If you guys have never had goat noodle broth before, you need to come to mom and try it because. It's goaty, but it's not gamey. Yeah, no. I mean, we took uh, a lot of attention on cleaning the goat meat with a bunch of ginger, rice wine to, uh, you know, kind of knock knock off that barnyard funk that it may carry, you know? Okay. Goat can be really grassy, which it still carries that tone, but not so fragrant. It's not off-putting. Man, I feel like we're in Vietnam right now. All right, so here we have Katim Chim. 
with a dipping sauce that has a poached egg. Okay. Uh, we break open the egg, kind of give it a good mix. Yeah, I mean, I can kind of see like the Chinese look on the eggplant, but this is new, that like um, the dip. So what, we just, we just dip in it? Yeah, just dip like that, get some egg, pickled garlic, there you go, some money. That's an easy one, man. easy dish. Uh, you know, you got peanuts, some fried shallots. Um, this one is our house-made tofu with uh, scallion and fish sauce. Very simple dish, we kind of let the tofu be the talking. Um, this is a dish that will be on our uh, wine bars menu. This is a great drinking snack food, uh, but we play around with it here. Um, Andrew, I can already tell you that you are going to love this at least a 9.6 out of 10 level. Why? Just because it's got the gurm chung on it, it's got the ginger scallion. Mm. Andrew's about the ginger scallions. All right, last but not least, what is this? Mustard green roll. Just a fresh bite with a fermented tofu sauce. Easy. Oh, man, what's in this thought? That's a fermented tofu sauce with a lemongrass uh, chili oil. Listen, guys, mom is always bringing something new. And every time you guys bring it, you guys bring it at an incredibly high level, especially here on the Lower East Side on Forsyth. Uh, Shout out to you, buddy. Now, here's a new spot that you didn't expect to see in Chinatown, man. We got Toraji. It is actually a chain from Japan. It's a Yaki Niku style restaurant. And listen, they got lunch specials for as low as 20 bucks. You got a bento for 25, but I had to go a little crazy and get the Joe Yaki Niku for $40. Ken, do you think you could uh, explain what I'm looking at here? So, this is the oxtail soup, Ooh. and uh, this is the kimchi. And for the meat, this is the tenderloin, and the outside skirt, and the prime short rib, mm. and this is the air-fried wagyu. Wow, dude, this, this bone broth, what did you say, oxtail? Oxtail soup. Oxtail soup, man, it tastes like a lot like I'm at one of the Korean tong spots, like a Sanang Dong over in LA. But let's get grilling, man. All right, so this is actually started by uh, Koreans who are from Japan, who grew up in Japan. So it's kind of like gonna be maybe a slight mixture between Korean barbecue and Japanese yakiniku. But either way, I got the piece of fat. I'm gonna start grilling, kind of lather up the grill right there, you know, like a stick of butter. Mmm. And this is beef fat. All right, here's the A5 Wagyu for $40. This is part of the set. And this, I'm sure, is gonna cook very quickly. I don't wanna cook it too long. How many seconds, how many seconds? What's that been, 10 seconds? 10 seconds now. Ooh, 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 not yet, not yet. I'm not gonna flip it yet. All right, let me put a couple more pieces on there. Sounds, it smells good. They have the vents on the side, and also this thing here, I thought it was a vent itself, but it's actually just in case the fire goes a little crazy, it's just gonna psh, take it out. So this is the A5 way. Guys, let me know in the comments down below if you like your Korean barbecue crispy or just cooked. I know some people, they like to kind of burn the meat a little bit. All right, my A5 Wagyu's ready. Oh man, put that, that's for the camera guy. So actually there's a word in Japan that refers to the ethnic Koreans that grew up in Japan. It's called Sankichi. And that's actually, I mean, it's not a similar word, but we, there's a concept also in China called Chao Xian Tzu. Chao Xian Tzu, uh, which means ethnic Koreans who grew up in China. All right, let's eat the Wagyu, dip it in the vinegar. Mmm, buttery, wow. That was really good. Mm. Yep, taking the fat and I'm re-lathering, re-oiling the grill, because I don't want things to get stuck. Here we go. Put the rest of the meat on. Hey, why not? Put the little zucchinis on. Hey, so listen, this might not be your typical Chinatown cheap eats, but lunch is the cheapest and it is the best deal. I mean, the 
beef quality is the exact same as they have in Japan. I just think it's really cool. Listen, they have all these different workers here and they might come from different backgrounds, whether they're half Korean, half Japanese like Ken, or they're Nepalese. They probably all train in Japan because a lot more people are moving to Japan to train to open up Japanese restaurants such as, you know, the many omakases in the city or a Taraji. So guys, if you're looking for a brand new Yakiniku concept over in Chinatown, right on Elizabeth Street, check this spot out. Oh, that's perfect. I'm so proud of myself, I cooked that perfectly. And for dessert, they got this mochi ice cream. Let me guess, it's black sesame. But it looks really good, wow. Mmm, that's good, wow. All right, you guys, our next Chinatown cheap eat is Bohai Dumpling. Actually, they only sell frozen wontons, shenzhen baos, shaolin baos. Aunties are down there making them all day long fresh. I'm telling you, I cannot wait to get a pack, go home and cook them up. Let's go into Bohai. One. All right, you guys, we just left Bohai Dumpling. I'm coming back next time for some more dumplings, but today we got some fresh Beifang style Tung Yo Bings. I actually don't know if they're Beifang style or Nanfang style, North style, sometimes they're thicker, thinner. We're gonna fry them up. It could be a mix. Of course, it's, um, it's, uh, we take uh, Osmanthus tea, we blend it with, uh, with some honey, and uh, we cook it down for some time. And, uh, and on top of that, we top it with uh, Osmanthus leaves and stuff. So. All right, you guys, this is a seasonal coffee here at Dreamer's Cafe on Henry Street in Chinatown. Two bridges, Osmanthus latte. As you can see, they got, they got a lot of Osmanthus on there. Sometimes people say they, they, they got the whole flower on there. Yo, it's subtle, but it's good. It's, it's good, it's, it's good. I appreciate you, bro. Bless. Enjoy. Osmanthus Latte, dreamers. All right, so that's it for number 18. And for now, it kind of feels like we've covered every spot, or at least I think so. But actually, there's always new things popping up, people rebranding their old spot. You know, they're coming up with new dishes or, you know, just new perspectives on things. So Chinatown Cheap Eats, it's not going anywhere, even with the rising price of everything and shrinkflation. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. Maybe Chinese people are immune to it because they're still giving you the best deal possible. It might be part of the culture. But anyways, leave a comment down below. And until next time, we out. Peace.